Okay, you're going to have to forgive me on this one. I couldn't remember if I'd told this joke before, so if I've told this joke, we'll laugh again. <laughs> Palm Sunday and Easter humor, you know, Palm Sunday's a little hard to come by. But it was Palm Sunday, and because of a sore throat, five-year-old little Johnny had to stay home from church with a sitter. And when the family returned home, they were carrying several palm fronds. And Johnny asked them what they were for. And his parents said, well, people held them over Jesus' head as he walked by. His father, his father said that to him. And, and little Johnny goes, well, wouldn't you know it? The one Sunday I don't go, he shows up. <laughs> You've laughed again. Thank you for humoring me. Okay, <clears throat> today's Palm Sunday, yay. And so this is the day that recognizes Jesus' infamous entrance into Jerusalem, and I just wanted to talk about that. Um, and the story is taken from Matthew, Mark, and John. I combined them all. <clears throat> so I'm going to read you the story. So it was five days before Passover, and the disciples and Jesus were in Bethany, and they were heading to Jerusalem. Jesus asked the disciples to go into the next village and bring a never-ridden colt for him to ride into the city. They proceeded to do what he asked, and upon presenting him the colt, they put their cloaks on it as a place for him to sit. Reaching Jerusalem, a large crowd spread their cloaks and other cut palm branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Many people ahead of him shouted as he entered, Hosanna! To the son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the highest heaven. The whole city was in turmoil as many were asking, who is this? And the crowds welcoming him said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. So today marks the beginning of what many Christians refer to as Holy Week. Holy Week consists of the days before Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. <clears throat> and I'd like to focus today on those days before his death and see what we can glean for ourselves in our spiritual journey from what Jesus experienced and modeled. So Jesus entered Jerusalem. And you know, he entered Jerusalem um, under, regardless of the warnings that he had received. There was a price on his head. And he entered knowing that a major life change, a significant transition on his spiritual journey was going to occur. He knew this, is my thought. And so some of the events of the story of that week, if you recall, for those of you that know your Bible, um, remember he cursed the fig tree, he cleanses the temple, he overturns the tables of the money chamber, changers and said they were making the temple a den of robbers. He continues to teach through parables, the scribes and Pharisees are on his heels constantly. He has the Passover meal with his disciples. He washes their feet. Judas betrays him. He's arrested as he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane while his disciples slept. And he goes before the council of chief priests, scribes, and elders and is interrogated and beaten. His trusted friend and disciple Peter denies him three times. He's handed over to Pilate, and Pilate turns him over to be crucified to satisfy the crowd's demands. He's mocked and then crucified. It's quite a week. So the background is that Jesus had been with his disciples over a period of three years. And again, when he entered the city, he was entering a time and a place where he knew he would experience great change. He had stepped into a phase of life, a, a change of life in between something ending, what was no longer, and something that had not happened yet. Between the no longer and the not yet, and I'm not going to, I did not name that talk originally. It's from a Janice Stanfield song, if you're familiar from Janice Stanfield, called Between the No Longer and the Not Yet. And I thought it just speaks so perfectly to Holy Week. So that week, what was no longer was his ministry of three years. What was to be no longer was his, his ministry with his beloved disciples, 
that had lasted three years, the intense teaching and mentoring of his disciples that had happened during that three years. He lost what was no longer his, his dear friend, Judas, as a confidant, and Peter's loyalty and close companionship. <clears throat> and if you remember, all of his dearest friends scattered And the very people that cheered him into the city turned on him in the end. And that week, what was the not yet, was the inner peace from having a deep knowing he was doing what was his to do. His release of the human experience, his resurrection experience, which meant he completely dropped his human experience, his human body, but he completely also dropped his personality and he integrated who he was as the I am, who we all are that he modeled. And so <clears throat> between the no longer and the not yet, it's that lovely place that we call the void. You know when you end something and before you have a new beginning, there's this place there's this experience that can feel very, very interesting, right? It's that time in our lives that can feel very scary where we don't know what's next. It can be very unsettling because it's not predictable. It can be very lonely because we're letting go of what was. And we're letting go of our, all the attachments that we possibly had to what was. And it can bring up emotions in us that we didn't know we had. And it can also be really exciting, anticipatory, because it's about something new. But what it always entails is change. And sometimes we like that, don't we? And sometimes we don't. And we see the emotions in Jesus that week, you know, from according to the story, his anger at the money changers, his impatience, his love, his fear. Remember we said, you know, take this cup from me. And his eventual surrender, allowing of what was to be to be his final transformation. And what I love about this story is Jesus' willingness to just walk through it. Even though it was scary, he must have been frightened. And even though he probably felt very alone. So I don't know about you, but I think that's kind of the hardest part, is the unknown and walking it alone. Even though we might have support, but folks, our spiritual journey is ours. Our choices are ours. And so when we have to let go of what has been, often we are letting go of what's defined us. Our roles, our titles, our beliefs. And we are often releasing what is false to really claim what's true. And Jesus modeled really being strong in that. But the one thing I think that's really tricky is that often when we are moving through that void experience as we end something and we are waiting for this new beginning is the shift that happens in our relationships. You know, Jesus had to really model standing in his knowing of who he was. His best friends scattered. His best friends, even though he had been with them for three years, really, really didn't know who he was anymore. I don't know if they ever really, really got it. And have you ever experienced that? You know, as you move through your life, move through your spiritual journey, that your relationships change. And I was reminded about my first high school reunion. And my best friend and I were, you know, we grew up in Charlotte. And I remember we got a hotel room and we had our yearbook. And we opened it up and we're like, oh, I wonder if he's here. I wonder if she's here. Oh, my gosh. And then we go and we do the reunion and we meet back in the room and we're like, Did you know who he was? Did you recognize her? Did you, how was your connection with, you know, the people that we were the closest to during that time in our lives? 
we reflected on how it was like, kind of like this. Have you ever had that experience? You know, with, with there, are, there are groups that I've been a part of in my life, and I love them, and they were so powerful for me when I was involved in them. And as much as I might want to continue to go to the reunion, sometimes I just go, it doesn't quite feel like I belong anymore. And it's okay. It doesn't mean that anything is wrong. It just means that sometimes it's kind of like putting on a pair of shoes that no longer fit. And we bless and we love and we appreciate, but sometimes it's just ours to do, to move forward. That reason, season, or lifetime of our relationships. A quote from A Course in Miracles says, the only true statement you can make about the past is that it's not here. The void is in the preparation time for us to be able to really let go of what was, folks. It's a fertile time of seed planting. And, and you know, and I love that, I love that, you know, Easter and this whole, you know, in unity we talk about Easter is, you know, when we resurrect in our knowing of the truth of what we are. And it always happens around spring. And this past weekend I went to the women's retreat. And it was awesome. It's up here in Hollywood. And um, I was able to stay until yesterday afternoon. And the drive down Barnesville Road, it is so beautiful. Maryland is so beautiful right now. And what is so precious to me, and it reminded me of the void. You know how the trees have just looked kind of, you know, they're just stark and they're just doing their thing. They've shed all their leaves. But right now, they're these little, beautiful, precious, little bright green little buds that are popping out. I just feel like that's the void expressing the new beginning just almost right there. If you are experiencing a void experience right now, yay. I know it doesn't feel comfortable. But what I love what Jesus modeled is that if we're willing to be in the void with all the discomfort, the fear, being gentle with ourselves as we embrace the impermanence of life because, folks, that's the only thing that we know about life is that it's impermanent. Actually, that's really not true. It's impermanent in this current form, right? Life is always life. Life is always expressing. And that's another thing that I love about spring because it reminds us that life is eternal too. And even in these times when we feel like we're just going through shedding skin and having a metamorphosis, and we don't really know where it's going, that we can see it for what it is. See, I just invite us right now in this Easter season to embrace and see the void, that space between the no longer and the not yet, for exactly what it is. It's fertile. It's amazing. Seeds are being planted in your soul. And as we can be gentle with ourselves and be here now like Jim Song talked about, we can be conscious of the feelings that are coming up, the discomfort that we're having, so that we can surrender and be open to the transformation that's coming, the resurrection that's coming. There's a Deepak Chopra quote that I love. In the process of letting go, you will lose many things from the past but you will find yourself. It will be a permanent, capital S, self, rooted in awareness and creativity. And once you have captured this, you will have captured the world. Folks, you know, when you're on your spiritual journey, there just comes a time when you can't turn back. Anybody relate to that? Yeah. You know, here we are, we're on our spiritual journey. And sometimes as we move on our spiritual journey, we're always moving forward. Some of the things from our past don't quite fit anymore. And it's okay. 
Can we bless them? Can we release them in love, treasuring them for what they have been for us and keep moving forward, knowing that on the spiritual journey, we keep moving forward. Letting go, letting go, letting go. So, this Friday, we're having a Good Friday service, and I just invite you to come because what we're going to do is we're going to be in sacred ritual about releasing. There's just something about the sacred ritual of releasing, isn't it? It helps us. There's something about the experiential experience of letting go so that we can follow Jesus' model of moving through the void and rising in a new possibility on Easter Sunday. How's that sound? That sound good? Okay. So this week, I just invite you just to gently reflect on your life and what is inviting you to let it go. What are you being invited through your soul's unfolding to let go gently, lovingly, and to curl up with your journal and spend some time in meditation. I really recommend that in present moment awareness so that you can see, we can see, I can see the emotions that are coming up, the thoughts that are coming up. Ah, it's fear. Ah, it's worry. Ah, I feel a little anxious, but I'm in the void. Yay. Folks, each moment, each moment we change our mind, each moment we end an old thought, each moment there's an ending void and a new beginning. It's happening moment to moment, and it also can happen over a course of period of time with larger events in our life. But I so want to invite you this Easter season to gently move through those times, know that you are supported by spiritual community. Yeah. Let's say yes. Say yes? All right. Let's affirm together. I embrace this time between the no longer and the not yet. I gently allow my growth process to unfold and know all is well. And so it is.